Right, D I thought I was going to need me still to have a sit down when he was going to tell me the price of these, but these apparently are standard tape of roller bearings. So, 30209A, which is what this one is, 30209 basically, standard tape of roller bearing, yours for £6.99 of your English pence plus the VAT, and the other one is four ninety nine plus the VAT. This is bugger all. <laughs> Phone up bearing options in Saltash. Um, they do just all sorts of stuff in there. And they're just over the bridge from where I live. So I need to chip off to me work now. Um, but depending on what time I can get there and everything else, I might get some of these today. Or I might just grab them first thing in the morning. And uh, we are sorted. Well, actually, I'll take them with me. <laughs> just in case, eh? Right, I'll be back. Right, I'm back, complete with a brew. <laughs> um, I've got my bearings, I've got Dunlop bearings in the end, because um, that's all they had. Um, but you know, I mean, it's still a, a name that I recognise. These bearings are Timkin, uh, T-I-M-K-E-N, and they're supposed to be like really, really, really good bearings. <laughs> but, um, and if I could have got Timkin ones, I would have done because that's what was in it originally and I just kind of like to keep things the same basically um, but they didn't have any so we ended up with the Dunlop ones but at the end of the day you know a lesser you know posh bearing I suppose <laughs> that is actually intolerant and not knackered and hasn't been pulled out by a puller in a cack handed way by a goon in a workshop is going to be better than a knackered one <laughs> So, this is what we got. Um, three o two o nine. See, it is nice. It is nice. See, yeah, you put a new bearing next to an old bearing, and you can feel the difference. Definitely. Um, let's just check. cock on ideal yeah we are in right we can shove all this lot back right i'm gonna start with the race i think why has it all gone dark and why is it raining again <laughs> it's supposed to be getting the summertime right so this is a cup that sits up inside the head unit um let me show you right okay so the bevel gear basically sits on this side, hence the cutout here. And we've got a few holes in it, basically. Um, this one is where the locating peg goes in the front. Just that screw jobby, it just sits in there and locates it. And then you've got a number of holes. So one there, one there, and one there. Hopefully you can see. So this is kind of up to there in the head unit. And as oil is drip fed in, it fills up and then it works its way through these holes. And it goes into this back bit, which is obviously um where the race sits and then the bearing so you get an all feed in either side there is a channel cut into it here so you know the all can sort of disperse and everything but it's, it's basically coming in through these holes there is another one uh which one is it um hang on there is that one there which is a blind hole don't go anywhere it's been bunged up here um, and that one is threaded. I have no idea why. No idea at all. Um, but you know, it is what it is. And then you've got this hole at the back here. So um, that's the return uh, for the oil. So as oil is pouring in through the top and everything else, it fills up this channel. Um, so that holds the bearing. And then basically it works its way back out through that hole, um, through that collar. Um, and back into the main the main machine so we need to get this race in there basically where do I leave me race where do I put me race uh, what we done with it 
I eat goon. <laughs> right. Okay. So E needs to go in there. There is a step to it. So I'm guessing this is going to need to be pressed in, although... Where's my bearing drivers? Ooh. There we go. Oh, it sees all the way down. That's all good. All right then. Don't need you anymore. So let's have a look at this. Can you see that? Hopefully. I'll try and do the zoomy thing. There is a machine surface here. You can see there's a line that goes around. So obviously this is an interference fit. Bearing's going to sit down on this bit and there is a hard shoulder that it goes up to. Um, so, and this is the collar with the, the oil drain that I was talking about, with the return, that all just pops off. However, he needs to stay on there. Um, actually, <coughs> I've just noticed these couple of rings. I'm wondering If they're supposed to be O-rings that go around there, or some sort of oil seal. Maybe that would stop oil peeing out the bottom of it. All right, let's, um, let's clean that up and see what I've got. All right, there are these rings here. These grooves. Um, hopefully you can see them here. And they sit down where this cup is. Um, so he goes on like that. And there is, you know, they are just above it, basically. Um, to me, it almost looks like it's supposed to be an O-ring in there. But I, I don't think that's necessarily the case. I have got some O-rings here. I could shove one on. I could stick one on there. But... Because the, you know, this surface is slightly lower, I don't think it's going to stop any, any of the oil coming out. If you can see here, when this is like fully all the way down and everything, um, the lip of this collar just goes past those, um, just goes past those grooves. But that's where the oil's coming out. Um, it is not a bad. I mean, there is, you know. There is a little bit of a gap there, I get that. But if it's supposed to be any sort of seal, then that's where it's supposed to be. Um, I don't think putting any grease in there is gonna help because obviously the sealing surface is further down. Well, I might just grease that bit up anyway. In fact, I probably will do. But I, I believe there should be some sort of, some sort of seal. I have to have a chat with the fellas in the tool room because they've got all sorts of machines in there. So I'm probably going to take a picture of this and show it to them and see if they can identify what sort of seal is supposed to go in there, actually. Let me do that. More questions for Brett later on, then. <laughs> right, well, I'm going to grease the bottom of this anyway because um, I might as well. I know oil's just going to pee out of it anyway. Right, so we can go on like that. Then we can get our bearing pressed on. So the way I did this before, he goes on like that. I've got one of these um, fork seal drivers. Ideally, I just want to put a piece of tube on the inner race 
and like you know either knock it down or whatever but I haven't got a piece of cheap that's exactly the right size so what I ended up doing before was using a fork seal driver because he just goes on I actually might have to move him out a little bit oh no there we go so he just goes on and sits on that inner race and then somewhere I had a bit of tube uh, see that one <coughs> yeah I'll do Don't need to pack it with grease because it's all oiled. <laughs> Aren't me races all the way down? So let's shove this back up as far as we can, and then we need to get this lot rebuilt. Okay, so everything's assembled. Um, all I've done is put the little thrust washer and then the spacer and then the key. That's obviously for the bevel drive. Yeah, the bevel gear. And all this lot is going to get shoved up here. Make a bit of space. And this is where it gets a bit awkward. Right, so bevel gear goes on. top of that I need to get my collar come on come down oh don't cock about now right I have the screw off we don't need that so because these you can't feed them in through the top and somehow you've got to wiggle all this up So is that that keyway um, engages in the bevel gear and you can't see it from the top. You can't really see it from the bottom. You just have to sort of rotate it until you can feel it. Come on. All right, so he's in. Woohoo. And now my wash has gone cockeyed. <laughs> Come on! Right, he's in. A couple of little turns on him just to get him going. Are you on? Yes! Don't fall out. <laughs> it's not easy because it all got to go in at the same time. Right, where's me drift? So he's nipped up. Um, oh, where to put my screw? <laughs> oh, don't do that. There we go. All right. So, that little lock in washer jobby goes and finds, you know, put the tang in the slot. And one of these holes should line up, which is that one. So you shove him in, do him up. Not that, well, you ain't going anywhere. Right. Um, new races in the top. which I've got mucky as hell now. It's all right, it's just gonna get cleaned out with oil. To get that race in, basically you have to, um, you can get to it from the underside, but you have to bosh it basically through this hole when all the spindle's out, and you could knock it out the top. 
so bit of a faff but doable so that bearing's going to go on the top there which is nice and then we've got our other little rocking collar on top here right so i'll shove my collar on top locking screw is down how much preload to shove in that is is a bloody good question i don't know i haven't got a clue um i was chatting with andy and he said you could look it up in the machinery's handbook uh work out what the preload needs to be which i'm sure you could and i've got a copy of the machinery's handbook just not here i don't know where it is i think i took it home um so i'm just trying to get a little bit of oil into the the bottom bearing and we'll flood the top bearing as well just for the hell of it all right so i'm just buttoning stuff up here um i have tipped a load more of the gearbox all down through the top bearing just because i mean it has been dripping oil i have lost oil whilst i've been doing all this malarkey um so i have just topped it up and i figured it's got to find its way past the bearings and everything else to get back to the main body of the machine anyway so i ain't gonna do any harm um and there is no easy way really of getting oil into it it's not like a filler cap <laughs> you have to have something off um to actually get oil into the machine which you know a bit daft really but there you go right uh let's choose a low speed um there we go 235 let's give that a bash oh the good news is it all seems to rotate <laughs> nothing's locked up so i haven't done my spindle up too much however it might still be a little bit sloppy so what i'm going to do is just run it for 20 minutes doing nothing no tooling no work no anything um we're just going to run it up and let everything find a home and then we'll come back and have a proper look at it and see what's what well i'm not sure if you can see i've got oil peeing out the bottom of this <laughs> That second collar there, that's wound all the way down. Ain't going any further. Um, and the top one, I've been running it for a bit and adjusting this down. It all runs quite freely and happily and everything else. But I've just got oil peeing out the bottom. Um, and I'm pretty sure I need to get a couple of little skinny O-rings to go in those two grooves. Um... I haven't got any in my kit, uh, like an R31, something like that would do, R31, R32, but the ones I've got are like three and a half mil section, this needs to be a lot thinner than that, um, but I'm pretty sure that would seal it up, so I'm going to get some O-rings, I'll have a look online, see what I can get, hopefully I'll be able to get some local, I'll have to have all this lot out again. <laughs> just to put the o-rings on um but i reckon that will seal it up then that should be all right i'll probably get a handful <laughs> right i'll be back <laughs> i'm back <laughs> um right been out and had a look see can't get any of those flaming o-rings locally um so i've come back and i've had another little play and what i was wondering was if this locating pin where it goes through the hole in that collar keeps it at a height where the collar sits over those um over those two grooves where i think the o-rings are supposed to go or the oil seals so i thought all right we'll have it out we'll have a quick look see turns out i didn't have the collar lined up exactly right so that wasn't in the locating pin which means the, the the drain for the oil wasn't in the right place and it was all just filling up and finding its own way out 
So that's my cock up. But I did say I would leave them all in, so that's fine. However, even with that locating pin out, um, you can't physically see where that collar sits in relation to those those uh, grooves on the main spindle. So I don't know. So I've got some. I've got some coming anyway, and when they do get here, I'm just going to pull his head off again. I'll stick them on, which is going to be a doddle. It does mean um, taking the bearing off again, but I've got an idea to get it off using the inner race on the bottom of the, the, um, the spindle assembly, so that'll be fine. I can definitely reuse the bearing if I do it that way, and even if I can't, it's only like seven quid. I'll just get another one. Um, but I'll have to have the bearing off to put those seals on. I just want to see if it's going to help stem the flow. So, what we're going to do is shove all this lot back together again, give it a bash, and see if it's any better. Right, he has been running solid now for half an hour, and there is no oil peeing out the bottom anymore. So make, if you're going to do this, make sure you've got the collar the right way around. There is basically two little drips, there and there. That is it. So it is better than when I was first using it. Um, and that I'm quite happy with. If I'm honest, I might even not bother shoving those O-rings in. But that's absolutely fine. Right, let's give it a try, eh? Right then. Ropey bit of alley. <laughs> and I've got that big 20 mil cutter again as well, which is what I was using when I was doing the first one. And we was getting all them swells and nastiness going on. So the idea is, what speed are we on? Uh, that'll do. All right. So the idea is, I'm just going to do the same powered cuts, backing up over the material, and see if I get the same swells and stuff, or if it's any better. Right. Peepers on. <laughs> Right, if you have a look, this is just the first two passes. I suppose in total the machine has been running for 35 minutes. All I did was tweak the bearings up um, and let it run. And then we've had a go at this. So you see I've got a circle there and I've got another one here. This is where I stopped it on purpose, part way through the run. I mean, you can't feel anything. It is lovely and smooth, but you can see it. So, um, this is where I stopped it on purpose, just to see what would happen. And this is where it started to, you know, it's obviously got to the end of its run and it's going, it doesn't have as much material that it's cutting through. So the load on the side of the tool changes. This is a rubbishy end mill as well. It's not very good, but it's quite a good test. Um, I've got a few little skip marks here as well. So I think the bearings need to be tweaked up again. So let's have the top off. We'll do that and give it another go. Right, this is the next attempt. All I did was tweak the bearings up a tiny, tiny, tiny bit. And I did this pass here which is way better than this one. I also stopped at the same place that that circle is. Um, and as you can see, I'm not getting the same sort of imprints. I'm also not getting these swirls that we had when I drew it back over the, over the material itself. So, I think the bearings has definitely done the trick. Um, edges of that is really sharp. <laughs> I um, also had a go at um, side milling, getting a much, much, much better finish. However, it's not absolutely dead flat, and that's because I've just, I've just noticed that I've got playing my gibbs on Y, so I need to cock about and, and have them set right. But the finish in both directions is so much better than what it was. Oh, I'm happy with that. I'm very happy with that, actually. It's a really nice finish to it. Don't matter if you stop and start, you don't get all the little squirrels and stuff. That is good enough to have a go at a set of top yokes, I reckon. Um, speaking of top yokes, I've basically got the plan sorted. There's a couple of little nattery bits that I need to, to just finish off. Um, I think I'm going to make it out of 6082, but I just, I, I, I don't know. I need to do a little bit more research on that and I'll just double check it's a sensible choice. And if it is, then I'm ordering a big old bit of billet. Um, and we can have a crack at doing some yokes. 
I am going to muck about with the Gibbs just to try and get rid of that last little bit of movement without stiffening up the handles. But Brian is basically done. Um, so, what's the plans? Well, um, I'm going to go home and get this video sorted and I'm going to order that piece of billet. Don't know how long it's going to take to get here. And in the meanwhile, there's a couple of other little jobs I can do. I've got to make the torque arm because the one that, you know, for the brakes, because the one that I've got ain't going to do the do. Um, and, you know, I've got the rear braking system to finish up and bleed it and blah, 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 stick all the exhaust back on again. Um, and then I really do want to be having a crack at the yokes. Because um, once I've got the yokes done, I can do the instrumentation cluster, stick that on there because it will mount to the yokes. And then it's just little brackets. So there's a bracket to hold this front brake reservoir and away I'm out with the headlamp and that's it basically that's all there is to it so um given that we can put him back on the road we can go and have a play and see what he's actually like okay set it up and try and scrub the ties in just to have a bit of a laugh Jamie sent me a message the other day because his turbo bike is back on the road he says when this is finished give him a shout we can go out for a hoon so that will be a giggle. Um, there is a fellow who's been watching the series, and I can't for the life of me think of what your name is. I do apologise. But he's watching because he's got an Archdale mill, the same as Brian. Apparently he's learning loads, which I don't get. <laughs> but anyway, given that all the parts to do this swap is like, what, 15 quid, something like that? It's a really cheap thing to do, and you do get a much better result. Um, so if you do end up doing it and you have all the spindle off and you're staring at those two grooves going oh yeah, there's an o-ring in there <laughs> I want to know if you do it let me know let me know if there's nothing in there but yeah I mean, I'm not saying pull it all apart to you know just check it for me but yeah go on pull it all apart and just let me know <laughs> I need to know. I've got some O-rings coming anyway. I am going to stick them in there and I'm just going to see if it stops all the oil flow. But he reckons his machine is dead oily too. So I'm willing to bet he ain't got anything in there either. But we shall see. So that's where I'm leaving it today. Thank you ever so much for joining us. And we will see you on the next one. Later.